When you think of musical Lutherans, Bach, Chris Johnson, Hanson, Mons, or Ilva Soccer come to mind, rock and roll stars don't often make the list. That's because you don't know Jim and Peter Mayer. You might know their parents, Lutheran missionaries, Jim and Sammy Mayer. The Mayers are a musical family. Jim and Sammy pass this love down to their eight children. Today, two of their sons have made a mark in the fast-paced, glamour world of rock and roll. Jim and Peter Mayer play, sing, and write for headliner Jimmy Buffett. Now, since joining the band nearly 10 years ago, the Mayers have played to packed houses around the country. Their recordings with Buffett have sold millions and launched Peter's solo career. Still, through it all, Jim and Peter have held on to their Lutheran roots. In fact, their witness um, well, is stronger than ever. For me, it began in India when I, I walked into the living room. My dad was playing some classical records. He had all these old giant RCA, you know, thick petroleum discs that he played on his record player. And I remember at about four or five hearing Yezu Joy of Man's Desiring. And I just started like crying. I mean, just uncontrollably, just kind of like, wow, this is so beautiful. What is doing this? And I think that that deep emotional movement just kind of draws you to something. And you think, well, you know, if this is moving me this much, you're just so curious. You know, what is going on here? What is this? We were a very open family, very musical family. My husband played the organ, the piano. I played the organ and the piano. We never said, you may only use this to play hymns. You may only use this, you know, in a Christian context. You may only use this um, if you do this in church. Um, God's world is very broad and very beautiful and very vibrant, you know, with, uh, with fun. Right before my husband's death, the day before, he had been getting a lot of comfort out of, he loved Paul Mons's music. And then he said, I, play me the music, you know, and my mom thought, well, he wants to hear Paul Mons, a good Lutheran organ music. And He was lying on the living room floor, and he said, hey, boys, you know, let, uh, would you put the music on? So here they go, and they grab a Paul Mons record and put this music on. And he's like, no, 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 you know, really irritable. <laughs> They're Pete and Jim, play their music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so she put on one of our albums. Well, first of all, I think God is really patient. My own faith journey has helped me to be really tolerant of other people because he certainly waited for me a long time. The waves were really powerful when we first joined the band. I mean, that's a powerful thing. You get in front of 20,000 people and they're all yelling at you, kind of uh, adoration type stuff and I got off the track. I mean, I'll make no bones about it. For about five years, I got way off the track. You get to the point where you're at the end of the block and there are no more houses to go into. And the only house you go into is you can either go to death or you go to God. I love my kids and my wife. While I had my years of running around, it leads me to a road that I wasn't happy on. And it's not a huge apology, it's just that I didn't like it. And I felt distant from God, I felt distant from faith. And I thought, you know what, I was brought up with that light and I felt this joy as a kid. I'm not going to lose that. It's definitely loud. <laughs> right now, what keeps me centered is very simple, it's prayer. Almost every night before I go out on stage with Jimmy Buffett, I'm sitting backstage and I'm saying, okay, dear God, Please direct my thoughts, free me from being selfish. This is what I want to do for you. I really think that Peter and Jim know who they are and whose they are, and that the relationship that they have with Jesus Christ is very important to them. And that relationship then is based on what God has done for them. And then they try to treat everyone and see Jesus in everyone they meet. There's one from Ron here. I keep in touch with Pete. I send him sermons either by fax or by email, and we usually chat email about three or four times a week when he's out on the road. And some of that is ministry that I provide to Pete and Jim, and certainly Pete provides me some good ministry as well. Hey, I'm waiting for my sermon, man. Where is it? It's been four days. I'm desperate. Please.
we have opportunities before the concert to do what we call Club Trini. And the people come in really, really close, so they're within inches of you. And almost without an exception, they come up afterwards and they say, we want to tell you how happy you've made our lives. Yes. You guys play. And I feel so undeserving when that happens. I'm like, I didn't do anything. I'm just happened to play with Jimmy Buffett. Or we're playing out here. And they're like, no, 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 you guys. You, you make us really, really happy. And while maybe we never mentioned the Bible to these people, or maybe I didn't say Jesus or God, there's that communication that I think God is very present there. Kind of let Christ's love come through you to them. Now that's a beautiful experience. When people are, they're, they're like, man, we just, and just to listen to them and look at them and to smile, and just to try to let Christ's love come through you, and just say, man, I'm really glad you're here. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you like our music, mm -hmm. and it's a real privilege to play for you. And just, and man, it just... That shocks them. It shocks them. That's like, yeah. we never, no one else would talk to us. No, no. one else would sign our autographs, because usually they're busy, like, you know, looking to cool, <laughs> you know. But when you go to them, that's, that's a witness. They're certainly in the world, but not of the world. And I think what I learned from Pete and Jim is that how important it is to be balanced. They play in front of 20,000 or 30,000 people in large stadiums. Our seating capacity here is about 250, and so it's kind of a different venue. And yet, when they come to town, it's very important for them to worship. Sometimes they play in the service. Other times, they're worshiping with the congregation. And I know when they come up for communion, that that's very important to them. And so here are guys who could be any place, and yet they elect to come to be at this place and to celebrate God's presence. And I find that really exciting. A lot of people, you know, come up to you and said, Gosh, you're, you know, you're a musician and you're a Christian, therefore why aren't you a Christian artist? And, and for me, first of all, my response is, well, I am a Christian artist. <laughs> it's almost like going to anyone who is a lay person and saying, well, you're a good speaker, why don't you be a minister? <laughs> it's like, well, I'm not sure that's what my gifts are. I had friends when I was young that because I was practicing eight hours a day, they thought that I was not being a faithful Christian. That you are too much into your guitar. How dare you get so into something? Get out there in God's world, man. Get, mm -hmm. get out there in this world and be with those people. And sometimes the best way to do it is to rock and roll. The church is not the end of mission. The church is mission. That is God's mission to the world. And uh, how we carry that out also is, is just so important. If you want to look at a great example, look at the life of Jesus Christ. You know, he, I mean, when he was tempted in the desert, you know, the devil just said, well, you know, make, make everything worship you, make, make all this great, you know, make, make this, and turn the stones into bread, do all these great things. And, and he's just so humble. I mean, look at how he was born. He was born in a, in a little manger. And yet we, in our foolishness, try to achieve greatness by being great, not by being a servant, not by just listening to somebody who needs to be listened to, or just going about our task faithfully, whether that's being a typist, or being a trash collector, or being anything. I have an album called Green Eyed Radio. Jim produced it, we played on it together. The whole theme of that was like, this is who I am. You don't have to like me, but this is who I am. And the brown-eyed trash collector and the blue-eyed baseball player had just as much to say. This has been a production of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America.